Hello, hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today we're working on a couple of Caroline's Craft Tree Challenges. I'm a little behind, as usual. <laughs> so, first we're going to get into the Sneaky Peek. And this is a cute one. Um, it's in my altar book, of course. And let's see what I've got on this side. Alright, this side I have a card. They're under like a tuck tag. I made it, I glued it to where it was a tuck. I put this little tag under it and this um this was uh my friend's mother and uh i put that in there because we went to her funeral so i put that here and then the piece that's on this side this was inspired by <clears throat> let's see uh scrapbooking with me um they didn't do a sweater but that's what came into my head they just had something that tucked under a page or over a page and anyhow let me take this little it's just a little tiny paper clip with some frou-frou on it and that kind of holds it in place but yeah there's a sort of over the top of the page and I know you've seen some of those in in people's journals and then you just paper clipped it in but I think theirs was squared off it didn't it had like just a, a focal on the front of it but I thought you know I want to this is a winter journal I want to make a winter sweater so this is my semblance of one. These are little tiny brads that I got from Michael's. They're like a little button. Aren't they cute? I got those on each side. I picked this blue because it sort of had a weave to it like a sweater would. And it actually is just one big piece of paper. I think this is, is this 12 inches? Uh, it's 11. I must have cut it off a little bit. I don't know. I don't know why. Anyhow, uh, and then the front is just folded under. It's uh, it's glued down and folded under. And then you just have to choose which side you want to be the upside. And that's the side that will get the buttons. Uh, and then you glue it down. And if you glue it down against the paper that's behind it, and the brad legs are only on this page, then you cover them so they don't hinder your tag going in and out. All right, and then inside is a tag that pulls out. So you can write on the back. I did a little bit of decorating here. Now this is a negative of a snowflake. I don't know if you can quite see it. This is like vellum that's inside of it, which I glued to the back. And what I did is I took some little markers, I think they were alcohol markers, and just kind of colored it. So I got different colors of a snowflake there. <clears throat> and then I had a punch insert, and I punched the size of the circle snowflake the same size as the insert here. And I had to fussy cut this. And what it is, is it's caught right up there at the top. <laughs> it's a little fussy. Now, in behind here, I decided to do a little bit of something to be pretty. So, I'll put the actual snowflake that got stamped out of here in there. And that's how she goes on both pieces. They're exactly the same. So, I thought that'd be a cute little idea. Um, I guess if you're wanting to see that done, because I don't think I ever did a video on it, you can leave me a message down below and let me know. And maybe we'll get to that in January. Or maybe it could be something we do for our altered book. We'll just have to see. Alright, let me get my tag in here. And we'll get to our first Caroline's Craft Tree project, which is week 49. We're going out of sync. I still need to do 48 as well, which that'll probably be the, my next video. Now here is what it is. The... the Prompts for this are, oh gosh, what is it? Oh, insect, which I have a little uh, ladybug here. Clothespin, which I, I do have a little die cut for a clothespin, but I thought instead of that, I'm going to um, use a tiny, tiny um, gosh, paper clip instead. Um, and then I'm going to paper clip this cute little quote down here i have a little mm, it's it's a button with one of those hooks on the back and i don't know if i can hook it through the paper clip which will hold this onto the backing um the next one is hourglass well 
hourglass. That got to me. I didn't know how to use an actual hourglass, which I could have drawn. Uh, so I thought I would use this great big clock and we'll, we'll score it down one side and put it in the book. And um, it's already covered on the back because this is Stamperia. So it's got wood on it. So it'll go in our grungy journal really well. But I thought hourglass. So it's got the hours here. And I thought glass. You know, I've been seeing these people do a glass crackle technique. And I'm going to do that with this. I thought you might want to see that. Now this little piece here is just a grungy piece of paper towel out of my splat box. And <clears throat> the other two prompts are ballerina and lace. So that's what I'm going to use here. So this is that cute little ballerina from the uh, Paper Dolls and Tim Holtz. She's going to be dancing right there. Um, I really wonder about changing the color of her, but I'm trying to figure out how I could do that. All right, let's set all of our little pieces and parts over here. And I got to get set up for the, uh, the glass technique we're going to do. Okay, we're probably going to make a nice big messy mess here, but we're going to have fun. <laughs> I'm using the Versamark uh, watermark stamp pad. And you've also got the um, ultra thick embossing powder in clear. I've gotten it before. I got it down at uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Either one has it. And what happened is I got it home and it was so thick and it, it was sort of lumpy. And I thought, what in the devil is this? I said, this is supposed to be smooth. And it wasn't. <laughs> and I went and took some. Somebody told me to go ahead and take some. And I had a coffee bean grinder. I wasn't using it. I bought it. I don't know why. I think for spices or something. So anyhow, <laughs> I got it. And they said to go ahead and uh, grind up some of it. So I have a separate little container. Oops. That is, I'm trying to smooth this out. And I have a separate container that has the ground one, which um, I'll use for fine detail. And I don't really use this one that much. That's why I had to get the dust off of it. It's usually at the very bottom of my <clears throat> embossing powder uh, container. So what you do is you're going to put this on here and... From what I understand, you do it in four layers. You do a lot of layers of this. And <clears throat> you just wiggle it around until you cover all the pieces and parts. And I don't think I got the embossing powder on it that well, but I think it's okay. It can be patchy. I, will, I need to do a, a fold in one spot so I can put it in the spine. So... I really need to watch you know what happens with it all right now what we're going to do i'm going to get my heat gun on and we're going to start cooking it <laughs> and i don't know if you want to see this part i'll do the first one with you but i'm going to have to do three more layers of this so i'll show you the first layer and then i'll go through and i'll do the next three off camera I don't want to bore you with it. And usually what happens with clear embossing powder, it will actually enhance the color. It looks like it's spitting it around. I'll have it all over my desk. Um, but it enhances the color of whatever is on the page. So it's really nice to have. Maybe I'll tilt it this way. And I can see that's really lumpy. It's probably due to my stamp pad, which is old as the hills. <laughs> and I haven't, I've got a new one up there. I just hadn't changed over yet. But you have to get all of this. Oh, it is, it's all over my desk. <laughs> I might have to change my stamp pad. But I've seen... Is it Marley Design? I think I saw her do this technique. And I did see someone else. It may have been Louisa Heinzel. I've been watching her for her grungy ideas lately. And I've been keeping up with her December... 
<laughs> what is that word? The the ephemer simber. <laughs> it's it's some kind of series she's doing this uh, this month. Oh my goodness, this stuff is everywhere. <laughs> I will definitely need to break out the new container. It's not holding on there. All right, give me a chance to do the next three layers, and I'll get back to you. Okay, as you can see, the coverage with this next one, it was definitely the stamp pad. It wasn't going to work for what I needed, so I got my new one out. You can see how shiny and new it is. Now I'm going to continue with the second one, the second coating, and then the third and the fourth. Because they did four, so we'll be right back. Okay, all the layers are done. See how slick it looks? Like glass. Now that last layer, it looked like it's still a little bumpy. So I really left the heat embossing gun on there until it got to be smooth as glass. For use of a better term. <laughs> there is one little bumpy area right here. I don't exactly know why that's got a little wrinkle in it. But I do know that this kept curling up. I did lay it under a book to try to keep it straight, but our next step may take care of all that because the next step, if it works, is where you crackle it or you crack it. Well, I don't know if it's going to crack though. Oh, there it went. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's why you needed all those layers on there. It's going to snap. Now, she did mention, I think it was... Louise or somebody did mention that you may have to put it in the refrigerator for a little bit if you don't get the cracks that you want and it just keeps bending without breaking you oh look how it, it went all the way down you might want to put it in the refrigerator just to to cool it off because you don't want to do it too soon right after you get finished but right in here is where my girl's going to go so I'm not going to worry so much about that area you won't see it but we are going to go around the edge. Yeah, that's taking care of any of that bowing that had happened. Yeah. You want to go this way, that way. That one's not breaking as much, but that's okay. <clears throat> it, this was a cool technique. I said, I got to try this technique. I do that all the time. I'll see people doing stuff. And I think, oh, I got to try that. I got to try that. <laughs> Now the back side is still just smooth paper, so that can be written on. So you have a journaling uh, area for back there, and it's not really wasting anything in your journal. I always like to have something useful. Oh my goodness. It's getting to the point, can't tell, where the bird nest or bird house is because the cracks are reflecting all the lines. Isn't that cool? All right. Oh, yeah. Because somewhere in here, i got to fold it. Okay. Now, what we're going to do next, let me get a little bit more over here. What we're going to do next is we're going to try to bring out the cracks. Give me just a second. Yeah, check out all these cracks I've got in here now. Isn't that cool? So they're going to come out now because of this little process we're going to do. We're going to use walnut stain because I like the really dark brown of the numbers going around. We're going to put a little bit of water on our table. Not much, just a little. And we're going to smear a little of this, especially right up here. Let's try this first. This is an experiment. So, you know, you never know how it's going to work out. But we're going to get a little bit of water See if that gives it more movement. I got a little paper towel here. Unless I don't know if I need to use water as much or what to make this work. Or if it will work. It may be I don't use water at all. Because you want it to try to go down in the cracks. Maybe I should crack it and do that. See how that works. Ooh. Let's see. Is it doing anything for me? I see a little bit, and it, it did it especially when I bent it. It got down underneath there. So 
I don't know if you'd want to go into all this rigmarole of <laughs> trying to get a color underneath of your, your cracking there, but it's an idea. Another one might be if you only have watercolor, uh, you might be able to try that, but I, I would uh, not be so sure about getting your paper that wet. That's the only problem there. I don't foresee that holding up very well. This is just Samperia paper. Now, if you started out with watercolor paper and you kind of printed a image on there of what you would like to have, it might work. Just might work. It's all in the experimentation. I'm getting a little bit of a, a contrast there. I do see it. I don't know if I want the on the top here to be as visible. I just wanted it in the cracks. We're going to try this area here because this is so nice and crackly. We'll get this little area. And then that might be all we do. We just want to get a little bit on there. I just want to show you an option. Yeah, get down in there. All right. Yeah, I wanted it to have a little bit of an aged look because we're in a grungy journal. Yep, this is going in the grungy journal, even though it's got a ballerina. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, I couldn't help myself. You know, I always got to make something for the current journal that I'm working on uh, with my challenges. All right. So that's what we're going to do right there. And I don't think it's going to really be visible other than, you know, where I've got it. I do need to do a, a uh, crease down in here. So I'll probably go over here to my, my uh, scoreboard and turn it backward like this. And what I want to do is have at least five and a half inches. So it's going to be right there on that line. I'm going to be scoring it right there. So I'll have five and a half inches on here. And then I'll have this one little area that's going to stick out on the other side of the signature. And we'll see. It might turn into something. It might just be like it is. <laughs> when I bent it, I've got a few little crackles that's sticking out, just like real glass. So you may want to get in there and just trim them with a piece of scissors. This is not the easiest thing to score on a scoreboard. So you may want to try doing... Uh, your ruler technique with your um, score tool and just lay it like that and go down through it. So that will, will work as well. All right. Our next step is to decorate the front of our little goodie. And then it's going to have to find a place in my journal to be used. Now I probably want to go ahead and I didn't rough up or grunge up the edges of this. So I'm going to go ahead and go through here with a little bit of ground espresso just to give me a dark edge so you know it holds true to the rest of the book I hope everyone is doing well I forgot to tell you I was so happy you came to join me I get right into this I just get excited to want to start <laughs> I forget to welcome you I'm sorry um Yes, I hope everybody are, is doing as well as expected, that they're enjoying their winter uh, season. It's starting to hit, although we've had some warm weather lately. It's it's starting to get here. Ours doesn't usually get here until at the late January, February time period. We always get this really hot time in uh, the first week or two of January, like summer. I mean... 70 degrees. I don't know what that is. It's kind of cool, you know. Well, not cool. It's hot. <laughs> um, okay. Our project here is we got this little girl. Put her on a scrap, a scrap piece of paper here. And I've got these alcohol markers. And this one uh, is FS6. Uh, I don't know if that FS is for uh, skin tone. Or, or what I think it might be but I wanted to have I guess her little 
poof is going to be white and her little thing on her head is going to be white. So this is going to be her skin. And I've seen people use alcohol markers, I thought I did, to color up their paper dolls. So I thought I would try it and see if it holds true. Now you can also get the embossing glaze, the, the you know, the kind of uh, see-through stuff. I don't know that this is doing anything. It could be I need to do several layers. So, let me paint her in here, and I'll go back up. I've seen a lot of people use this little girl. She is so cute. She comes in different sizes. I forget what I used. Oh, I used her, I think, in the fairy journal. I put wings on her back. So, yeah. And you could get in here and do her little cheeks just a little bit redder. But I don't trust myself. <laughs> Plus, I don't know that that worked that well. You can't really see the pink. I can see it on the edge, and that's about it. Oh, well, that was just a try. I need to watch some of those videos on how those people do that. Okay, let's get in here and start putting down our base. We have our paper towel, which the purpose of the paper towel is it's got a little glitter on it. But it's dark, and it's got sort of the colors that's in here, and um, it's going to make her stand out a whole lot better. I'm trying to think where that's going to be. Okay, let's try that. I hate covering up those letters, but, you know, oh well, you got to do what you got to do. Okay. Now, mostly that's down. I don't think I need to worry too much about it. There we go. And then I'm going to put this little piece of lace because I have to. <laughs> it's, it's part of the uh, part of the prompt, so I've got to use the lace. And I've had this little piece on my desk to be used, so let's go ahead and do it. All right, put a little bit more down here, a little bit more down there, there. And then she'll hold the rest of it down. i got a little phrase on there, which is fine. All right, now her. Put her down with the fabric tack as well. Got a little bit on her toe. That's all right. Huh. I can only imagine what this little girl was like when she grew up. <laughs> I bet she was fun. <laughs> she sure looks fun. All right. I'm going to put that right here. And get her to stick down really nice. Yeah. See, the the little bit of dark in the background kind of helped. Helped for her to stand out. <clears throat> All right. The idea with the bug, we have to have a bug or insect. They call it an insect. We're going to go ahead and put the... And I'm going to use fabric tack for this whole thing because of this slick surface. And... Oh, there goes my boy. He thinks I haven't fed him, but there's food out there that he refuses to eat. <laughs> now, the purpose of the bug, <clears throat> or the reason I chose this bug, is because of the roses. So, I'm thinking he's down here getting ready to climb up on him some roses. And then I'll put this up here at the top. About cherish every moment. Oh, it's a little sticky. Uh, I do think I will glue it down, but I'll put the paper clip on there because that's supposed to be my clothespin. She said we could substitute. <laughs> I, think, I think I'd like to substitute. This is kind of covering up my, my goodie uh, that I just decorated for you, but that's okay. We'll just leave it. Um... You know, where I use the distress uh, crayon to <laughs> darken that crack. <laughs> it will. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is this. Now, stay tuned to the end because I'm going to give you a screenshot or give you the chance to do a screenshot of the, uh, the little rules for the altered book, I guess you could call it. So, it, it could be something you could go by. 
that will be coming up next week. Okay, I threaded on my little sunflower button. And now we're going to put that on here. Let's see how she works. I don't know that it is going to work. Huh. Well, hmm. I don't think it's going to work. That was just an idea. I had these from way back when, and I wanted to use them, <clears throat> but it's not going to happen. So we will take it right back off again. Okay, so instead of the button, <laughs> we're going to have a little bead. It's green, so it'll go with some of the colors in the background of this. And we're going to stick that on there just like that. How cute. All right. So have we got everything for our challenge prompts? We have insect. We have clothespin, which has uh, been substituted for a paper clip. We have hourglass, the hours and the glass. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> and then we have our ballerina. And we have our lace behind her. So we've got everything there. Now, what you might want to do a screenshot of is the altered book template, I called it. And it's where I showed you how you get a book that's glued and not tied. Uh, the first five pages you leave in there intact to keep the integrity of the book together. Uh, you'll rip out the first eight to ten pages. And then you will leave four to six pages for our pocket designs. Then you're going to rip, rip out eight to ten more. Leave another four to six. We can always rip down to four if we need to. That There's no problem there. And then you're going to continue that until you get to very at le last of the book. You're going to do exactly the same. You're leaving the last five pages. And that's, of course, again, for the integrity. So that's all you're going to need to know. Uh, you don't need to know what kind of pockets to make for now. Uh, we're just going to twing it as we go along. Um, and in the six-page uh, situation, that's where you're going to have maybe a couple of... Uh, side tucks in there like I showed you in that one video before. All right, I hope you enjoyed our little uh, process today and that neat little technique I showed you with the embossing, uh, the clear embossing powder where you can crack it. Look how good it cracked in some of those cases. Oop, I got to trim that. There's some jiggy jaggedy edges <laughs> sticking out there. Wow. All right. Yeah. You need to take some sandpaper or something uh em embroidery file or whatever you call it you can do that yeah but that is so cool all right well i thank you thank you for coming to visit and check in with me again i'll probably be doing the other caroline's craft tree challenge to get it done and out that was last week's <laughs> so thank you everybody come back Bye bye